What's going on guys, Intech here, and welcome back to Unturn. In today's video, I thought I would walk you through some basics of starting out. What you need to be aware of, what to do, some basic crafting things, how to survive in this crazy game. This game is very intense, it's very in-depth, and uh, it can be overwhelming at times. And hopefully this video will help you to learn what to do and what not to do and what to look out for when you first start out. So let's get right into it. Alright, so when you first spawn into the game, probably the first thing you're going to notice is this wonderful world. But aside from that, your notifiers, your markers at the very bottom there. So as you can see, I have 100% health. That's what's in red. And then you have hunger, thirst, toxicity, and then energy. So currently I have 27% hunger because I need to eat something. And then thirst is at 33%. Your energy, as you can see, is being exerted. can be exerted by running or jumping or doing special moves with right mouse button when you have a weapon or by fast swimming. Swimming. So you can gain energy back by simply waiting as you'll see here it'll start to uh, come back there it goes or by finding things like energy drinks which I do believe work for energy and your thirst as well. Your toxicity level is something that will increase if you get hit by zombies which I believe is like basically you becoming infected and then also uh, if you eat things like raw meat without first cooking it. So you do need to be concerned about all of those things. Also with your with your health, your health will go down if you get hit, as well as if you run over something like a trap that you build or somebody else builds and you bleed out. You can actually bleed out if you don't bandage your wounds. Hunger can, you can get your hunger back by obviously eating things. You can find things anywhere from potato chips to raw meat that you cook to various different items in a cafe or a pizza shop. Your thirst can only be gained back by drinking things like soda or finding a canteen and filling it up at any water source and then drinking that way. I don't believe wells currently work, but basically that is it for your notification, your markers down there at the bottom. Now, you also have to worry about zombies. Zombies are probably your biggest threat next to hunger and thirst. And believe me, unless you probably set up a farm, you will wind up having to constantly scavenge for food because it is very hard to maintain your food and your thirst levels. Now, the next thing we should probably talk about is the skill section. So you have skills that you can increase and you can get experience by doing things like cutting down trees or mining or killing zombies. Zombies is probably the biggest way to get experience in very quickly. It also depends on the kind of zombie that you kill. If you kill like a commoner, like a citizen folk person, you're only going to get plus one. But if you find military type uh, zombies, you can actually gain plus four. So you can actually gain experience pretty fast. And then you have these different stats that you can put your experience into. So you have survival, which is slower starvation and dehydration. So if you put into all survival, you will have very slow uh, hunger and thirst. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this in there for now, just so I can actually do this without having to worry about having to go find food real fast. Your endurance is greater stamina and agility. So running side to side, I believe, is agility, which zombies will catch up to you if you run in straight sideways. You need to make sure that you're running straight instead of side to side, or they probably will catch you if you're running away from them. Greater stamina, which is this down here. Then you have sneak, sneaky beaky, which is hilarious, uh, less aggro and noise. And so if you're sneaking around, like currently, if I was to go sneak, up to which this is crawling sneaking is X and uh, if I was to go sneak past these zombies they would instantly see me because my skill level is not very high and it doesn't really make a difference marksman is better accuracy and recoil so if you use something like a p90 you're gonna have all kinds of recoil and specific things like the Mosin will cause a lot of recoil. So you can actually reduce your recoil by doing this or getting certain kinds of attachments, which we'll talk about later. Better accuracy over distance uh, does make a huge difference, trust me. Warrior, if you basically want to just go tank, increase your survival, increase your warrior all the way up, and you'll do more damage and take less damage overall. Outdoors is uh, stronger mining and chopping. Don't actually know the significance of this, if it actually will increase your chopping and mining time. Uh, I have to look into this, but I believe that's probably what it does. Craftsman is huge because when you increase your craftsmanship, it allows you to actually build certain things. Like, for example, you can't build a crate unless you have the first craftsman uh, unlocked. You can't build a chest unless you have the second one unlocked. 
Immunity is less disease and more vitality. So that's obviously a huge thing as well. So that's your skills, and improving these will improve your gameplay experience. Crafting is a whole different set of things, which we'll probably have to uh, make a second portion of this video to just simply talk about crafting, as it is such a huge aspect of this game. But for the meantime, if you do want to do some crafting, you can find crafting recipes on Wiki, and you can find things like that. I will make a second part specifically talking about crafting, because believe me, it is very, very, very in-depth, and there's a lot that goes into it. So your apparel, the next thing that I should probably talk about, you can actually get clothing that will cover your body so you're not a nude a nude person like my nice mullet there and my dirt face. You can also get armor that you can wear. So you can find like desert armor, force armor that you can wear over that are military grade. You can also find riot gear that is like, uh, you know, citizen police level. It's not nearly as good as military grade. You can also find military helmets, all kinds of different things. All right, so what I did was I waited till nighttime and then I died so that I could start fresh. And uh, you can't see it, but my base is over there on that island. Here's my long bridge over there. And I wanted to come here simply because uh, essentially I respawned in my, my sleeping bag. And we'll talk about sleeping bags in a little bit, but basically I wanted to show you the difference between what a city looks like and what the farm looks like. The farm is very easy. Uh, the zombies move slower. There's a zombie here that can run as fast as you run, or walk as fast as you run, I believe. So it's very different. There are a lot of different kinds of zombies. Certain kinds of zombies will give you, you know, one experience, while some will give you four some seem to be a little bit stronger and can push other zombies. And if that happens, you can wind up having zombies be on you very, very quickly because there's a horde of them being pushed by one another and you essentially kind of get glitched into to where a zombie can catch you very easily. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm moving up behind this house because I don't think there's any zombies guarding it. There is a zombie over there. And if I was to move probably to the towards the front of the house, he would see me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into this house here and see if there's anything in here. And it looks like we do have some stuff in here. Orange hoodie. So you can choose to wear clothes or not if you want to. I mean, it's totally up to you. But basically, the importance of cloth, like we just found, is that you can make sleeping bags. Or you can find sleeping bags as well. Sleeping bags can be made with seven cloth and two duct tape. So if you find duct tape, keep it. Because it's going to be important, either for making ladders or for making a sleeping bag. Now, I have some cloth. So you can just right-click and, and click onto your person. Or you can just hit uh, control click to put things on automatically so you can do that with weapons armor shirts clothing things like that so you could take this for example and if you wanted to get more cloth you could just drag this over here and you can see that certain types of clothing will give you more cloth so i'm just going to go ahead and craft that because what i'm going to try to do is actually make a sleeping bag now the purpose of sleeping bags are to essentially save your location so if you wind up dying you will respawn in a sleeping bag i'm sure some people know of this concept and when you put down a sleeping bag when you craft one which is just seven cloth and two duct tape so we take the cloth we drag it in here put the duct tape in here craft a sleeping bag so the purpose of a sleeping bag is so that you can respawn and you can respawn by simply claiming it so when you put it down it'll say unclaimed bag and you can hit F to claim it and then when you die you'll respawn there so let's say that you're out you know scavenging somewhere and you find a really good location that you would actually like to start building a base on which we'll talk about in another episode because obviously it's going to be very in-depth because the crafting system for this game is very very in-depth not obviously you probably didn't know that but the crafting system is very in-depth and it can uh, be very very nerve-wracking if you don't know what to do and so for the time being there is a recipe list on wiki if you want to look that up now you can't have yourself destroyed by zombies so keep that in mind too so finding a good location is very key now i think if i I want to, there's a pizza place in this place, in this town, as well as a pharmacy. Pharmacy is where you get your meds, and pizza place and cafe is where you get your food. Now, I'm not going to be able to sneak by this thing, so what I'm going to have to wind up doing is just running. So you'll find yourself in a situation where you just have to run and jump through windows and try to lose the zombies until you can find a weapon and defend yourself, or you could just punch them out if you wanted to, but that can take quite a while. Another thing to note too is that uh, zombies might not instantly 
see you. So if you run up to them and you punch them, you might actually get bumped out and they might not be able to kill you. And here comes a zombie. I must have died there like forever ago or something because there's a massive horde of zombies right there. So now you can see I have zombies following me. And uh, it's not going to be easy. So here's a pink shirt one like I was talking about. And see how fast she's moving? You can try to punch her out. I don't know if it's going to work. There we go. And so you can punch and back up, punch and back up, punch and back up, punch and back up. And just do that, okay? Now see, they're getting pushed. So, oh, they're getting pushed along, which is uh, hard for you to actually wind up killing them if they're all being pushed like that. Now, another big concern are these zombies that are on the ground because they uh, will push the other ones and will hit you when you don't think that they can. Also, keep in mind that uh, you probably want to move side to side when you back up. Not not directly side to side like you're bobbing because that will actually slow you down. Instead, what I mean is when you back up for a while and you're punching them out, turn and go the opposite direction because what might happen is you might be running backwards and there could be a zombie somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and will actually aggro on you and can kill you so you need to be aware of that as well that you know you're not just safe doing this you actually safe doing this and backing up and punching you actually need to be concerned about zombies coming up from behind you the other way as well so i'm fairly confident that i can punch out zombies now so just keep that in mind that you can punch if all else fails so we got some experience there and i'm going to go in here which is this is a uh, clothing store and i'm just going to get all kinds of cloth because, like I said, I'm trying to make a sleeping bag. And uh, there is some cloth here. Yeah, I did die here like forever ago. So we have a, we're going to have enough cloth right now. Six. So let's put this on. And let's put those on. And then let's make this last one into cloth. So now we have seven. And here is an outfield. So there is an outfield just laying there on the ground. And so... Your outfield is it is a uh, long range rifle essentially, and you will if you don't have any clips you will spawn with a specific amount of ammo and this one just has one chambered so you do have one. Certain guns have more recoil than others, and you do need to be aware of that. Like specifically, for example, a P90 will recoil like crazy, and you can increase your skill. Like I said to uh, help with that, or you can actually get attachments. So this is a kind of a cool area because this this town is going to essentially allow me to walk you through several different things which are important to starting out so let me just see so if I was to shoot this see I'll probably aggro this one back here nope didn't aggro so if you shoot in town like that you can actually wind up aggroing certain other zombies if they're close enough another thing to note is that these are your hotkeys one two three four and if you get a certain backpack you can actually get five I'm actually going to drop these because I don't need these. I'm going to drop that as well. I'll keep that just just for just just for now. Um, so when you find a backpack, you can actually get more inventory slots and hotkey slots, essentially, depending on the backpack. And so if you have a weapon here or whatever, or if, let's see, we switch this to three, you can pull it up in three, but just by hitting three on the keyboard. Now one doesn't have anything in it anymore, so nothing's coming up. And if I just switch it back to one. That's what happens. So it's it's straightforward. But essentially, you have hotkeys. Now, the botanist. The botanist store. Actually, I like this city because this is a pretty good way to do a, do a guide. So the botanist store uh, has seeds and fertilizer. Fertilizer can be used in conjunction with wooden platforms to make uh, greenhouse platforms, which you can plant seeds on. Now, you can also plant seeds in the soil, which will take longer to grow. But it can it can be done depending on how you do it. And, um, let's see. So, as you can see here, I could I could put this down right here. So, you could build a base and just put it down in the grass if you wanted to. And, I mean, you could probably do this. This isn't actually all that bad of an idea to do if you, let's say you frequent a city often. This is not supposed to be here, by the way. If you frequent a city often, you could just put down seeds and come back and actually get food from them. So when this is done growing, which will take like 9 to 15 minutes or something like that, you actually you can harvest it by hitting F and you can pick up whatever it is, like say corn for example, and you'll get corn here. Now you could take and put that corn into your your crafting menu here and get two seeds. So essentially you can constantly exponentially grow the amount of crop that you have. So that's why getting a farm is very, very important because you can 
actually have a limitless supply of food if you do it right. So this isn't too bad of an idea to put down the seeds you find in random cities and then come through, harvest it, and get the food, put the seeds back down, and just move on. Like it's a cool way to always have food in a specific place. So like I said, you can take these seeds and you can plant them and grow a garden that way, which we'll cover in a later video. Now, as you can see at the bottom there, I'm starting to get very hungry and thirsty, so I need to find food and drink. The pizza place or cafe place, any place that's like a restaurant, should have food. Now, that doesn't always mean that they're going to always have food, uh, but they most of the time do. So here's a very uh, important thing, since we were just talking about farming. If you find things like moldy corn, you can actually open up your crafting menu, take that corn, put it in there, and it'll give you one corn seed. So then you can take that seed, hit equip, and go and plant that seed, just like we're planting that other one. So your moldy stuff can actually be used. So if you find moldy water, you can actually use purification tablets that you can usually find in a pharmacy and purify your water that way. So just, uh, just know that it's not necessarily completely bad. You can salvage it essentially. So we found some canned beans and some canned chili. So if you click on it and click equip and then left click, it will actually eat it. So as you'll see, the, the hunger is starting to go down. We'll see how far it goes. It's probably not going to go the entire way down. But yep, 29%. So if I eat this, it probably should go all the way down to zero. So there are varying types of food that you can find, anywhere from cho chocolate bars to canned vegetables to raw meat that you can cook to fresh fruits and vegetables. So depending on the food that you find, you actually take your hunger down at specific uh, intervals. So I just found a kitchen knife, which can actually be used as a melee weapon. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our first slot. And as you can see, I can cut with that. Or I can use my special right mouse button, hold it, and it will do a power move, which will take away stamina. So note that as well. So I know there's a lot of stuff in this in this video, but it all is very important to just starting out. So when you trigger aggro on a zombie, you can actually hear them come because they'll make that noise like that. <laughs> there we go. So I took a hit there, but I took them out relatively easily. See, moldy milk. Don't want that. Anything worth using in here? Chocolate bar. So you can find like a chocolate bar, which will not give you back that much uh, hunger, honestly. It's very, very minimal. I'm going to ditch this because I don't think I'm going to find a clip for that. And if I do, I know where to come and look for it. So if you drop a weapon, it will stay there. Unless you're playing on multiplayer server, then somebody might run by and snag it. So keep that in mind as well. Did I check this house already? Yes, I did. All right, so we're going to continue going down here, and we're going. We're looking for duct tape. That is what we're looking for, and we're also looking for a uh, canteen of some kind. So we found some duct tape. Nice. And here we go. What's this? Moldy bottle water. So I'm very. I have no. I need a backpack. Okay, so I can't carry everything that I want to carry. Oh, oh man, I need to explain this. So shells. I need to find something to drink quick. So shells, this is just a box of assorted shell casings. You can actually take and put your shells in here and some nails and we'll actually make some buckshot for you. So you can combine ammunition and you can combine items and make ammunition or make traps and things like that. So that's something important to keep in mind. I'm just going to drop these for now since I don't need these. Um, hmm, I should come back for that. Let's go ahead and eat this. And then I'm going to take this duct tape and this water because I think I'll probably find purification in the pharmacy. Maybe. We'll see. So we have some zombies down there. And then watch out for them. I'm going to jump in the window here to avoid uh, aggroing them right now. Some more cloth. Here's a magnum. And I don't have that Winchester clip anymore, which can be used in a magnum. So you can get pistols, rifles, automatic machine guns. You can get katanas. You can get all kinds of stuff. And they're going to be adding in stuff as time goes on. I guarantee it. Uh, Colt pistols to just long-range snipers. All kinds of stuff. So let's see. What do we have down here on the ground? Canteen. Perfect. Okay. Let's ditch the moldy bottle water. And let's uh, talk about canteens. So canteens are very, very important. Because like I said, canteens can be used at any water source. So I just drank this to show you what you need to do. I'm probably going to have a zombie back here somewhere creeping around. 
I'm probably going to aggro this. It's a zombie right there. So pay, pay no attention to that bridge. It's not normally there. Okay, That's just my bridge I built. So just take your bottle that's empty and go up to the lake. Bring it out and then left click when you're close enough to the water. And you can continue to do this until you're completely um, empty on your thirst meter. And so it's very in, it's very important to do this and have a canteen so that you can do this. So canteen's very, very vital to your survival. All right, so let's move up here to the pharmacy because the pharmacy is very important. Okay, so here's something to note. This cop is going to be harder to kill than a normal zombie, and military zombies are even harder. And you'll see that I'll actually get different kind of uh, experience report, uh, reward for killing this thing. Two plus two experience. So the other ones are giving me plus one. That gave me plus two. If I find a military one, it should give me plus four. So here is the pharmacy. This building's a pharmacy right here. I'm going in the back door. So morphine. There are various types of things that you'll, you're going to find. So dressing, for example, is a purification tablet. So there you go. So purification tablets, like I said, could have been used with that water, but we found a canteen, so we don't really need it. So there are varying types of medical supplies. There are supplies that will lower your toxicity. There are supplies that will bring back your health. Like, for example, let's just go ahead and let's take this bullet bag, and I can show you if you equip the bullet bag and you left click, it will actually get a ton of health back. Uh, I can't I can't remember which one gives you the most back. I think maybe a blood bag. There's also a med kit. Morphine is um, let's just I think it, it gives you descriptions for everything. So let's just bring it all up. Injection of powerful painkillers. So that will help obviously. Then we have antibiotics and vitamins both can combat disease. So if we use these, you'll see my toxicity should go down. So there it goes. So vitamins are very common to find. Antibiotics are also kind of common now too. And uh, dressing is another type of high-quality cloth to stop uh, bleeding. So high-quality cloth with great blood stopping. So if you're bleeding from stepping on a trap or something like that, Use dressings, rags, bandages, whatever you can to try to stop your bleeding. This will also gain your health back, so um, keep that in mind. Let's see. What else do we have? Okay, we triggered this zombie. That's an energy shot, I think. Stamina. Plus two. Okay, so let's just uh, take this just to give an example here. So you can also have these, which will... Uh, injection of salmon adrenaline so like let's just say I'm running I'm running I'm running I'm jumping I'm running I'm, I'm getting chased I'm trying to avoid them if you take this use this real fast you'll watch watch my stamina boom look at how fast it's going up so that's what that does adrenaline makes sense right so this is a very specific location that I want to show you oh a nice police cap uh, we can put that on. This is a very specific location I want to show you, okay? Because this has some higher quality loot, and there's also military loot as well. Uh, I'm not going to make a sleeping bag right now. So left click, click to drop all. I'm not going to make one because I want to show you guys uh, just some stuff that we have here. So these are both Bredas. Label ammunition. So you can see what it, what it takes. Label magazine. Okay. So if you did this, for example, you can see that I don't have any ammo left because I just took the mag out. And here's the mag right here on the ground. So if we take this, let me just uh, let's just do this. Okay. Let's drop the knife. Let's drop the duct tape. Take this mag. Take this ammo. And hold T to load your mag. Take your safety off by hitting V, and then let's just uh, let's just try to kill these things. We'll see how this goes, but I want to show you how to uh, refill your your ammo. They're gonna keep coming. So we're out of ammo, right? And I don't have a knife anymore, so I just need to punch these guys out real fast. So, I just got hit by the one that's crawling. These things are the biggest pains. 
crawling zombies are the biggest pains for me. Because they always glitch out and they hit you like that. Okay, so there we go. So we took some damage, whatever, it doesn't matter. We are going to uh, load this ammo. So if we uh, bring out our gun, hit 2 or just do that, and then take the magazine out, you'll see that I got the magazine on the ground here. Hit F to pick it up. Go into your crafting, take your mag, take your civilian bullets, and you will make a magazine that's chambered with 13 shots. Craft, and then hold T, bring it back together, and there you go. That's how you do that. Okay, so that's also very, very important to know. So you can get your mags from your gun that you have, so it's not like you have to go look for them. Now, I don't always, I don't, I, it's weird. I don't like to, I don't like to specifically play uh, where I'm refilling mags. I actually like melee more than anything. It's, it's very interesting, but that's just my personal play style. So I'm going to address here, and you can see me gain some health back. If I don't get it back all the way, I'll do some morphine. There we go. So you can see, by getting hit by those zombies, my toxicity level has gone back up. Which is not good. Now, it's probably very important to know that you probably should conserve your ammo. And just use melee. Unless you're in a situation where you need to... Uh, my safety's on. Where you need to actually fire. You know, let's say you got a shotgun of some kind and you can unload one shell into their face and clear a crowd really quickly uh, you know it's probably wise to do that alright so here's another one coming I'm gonna actually use my knife I'm gonna take that back and go kill this guy and then I wanna show you this boat so like I said the boat is uh, actually a special special place because you can actually find some really really nice loot there So this is kind of a construction zone and you can find crafting materials like boats or there's small bolts, some nails, you can find nails, and like I said, you can use nails to actually um, fill up some shells. Here's a very important thing, gas can. So you take your gas can, uh, it's probably full, and you can actually refuel vehicles at gas can, at uh, like big tanks. So you can actually drive cars in this game, so that's very important to know. So I'm going to drop this for now because I don't need this. I'm going to take this apple juice box and I'm going to drink it. And then uh, we're going to go into this boat here. But I'm just going to loot a little bit. Actually, I'm going to switch these around because I'm just used to it that way. And let's see, moldy potato. Remember, we can make seeds out of those. Guys, I really hope that this video is uh, helpful and you're finding that helpful. I'm just kind of walking through everything. Ooh, a compound bow. So here's uh, something very interesting. Bows are very silent. Uh, you can make arrows out of sticks and nails, I believe, and uh, it's very, very um, important to make sure you have a huge stockpile of arrows because you might be inaccurate and you might actually wind up uh, losing them. It is, It should be a one-shot headshot, though. Okay, so the, we got lucky, actually. Let's see. Any zombies in here? I might have aggroed all of them out. I think I did. Even the one back here. So there you see it uh, fired, and you can actually see it in the side of the wall there. But uh, okay, so we actually got really lucky. We actually found a, we actually found some tape, some duct tape, and we had the seven cloth, so we can make a sleeping bag because there's duct tape in there. Or we can just come in here and grab this one. <laughs> so let's say that we wanted to make the our place back here. Let's actually go up here. And we'll talk about ladders. So let's say we wanted to put this down up here. You can actually do that. okay? And you can put it down up here. And when you put it down, you'll see it says claim. Hit F to claim it. F to unclaim it. I'm probably going to want to destroy this so I don't ever spawn here. Uh, but then also, look at here. We have a, uh, a knapsack. So you take your knapsack or whatever backpack you find. And you can just control click to put it on. And you can see I also, now I have more space now there are bigger backpacks that have more slots like i said and a lot of slots as well we also found an axe which brings us to a very important discussion axes are used to kill zombies but also to chop down wood chainsaws can also be used so to get wood from trees you need an axe to get stone from a stone like over there we need a pickaxe another very important thing to know 
climbing down ladders, which I had a horrible time with when I first started out and I was breaking my legs constantly. To go down a ladder, don't run off like this. Turn around and just go down until you get the animation. Now you can, in mid-climb, actually fall off if you go from side to side or something. So also keep that in mind that you can also fall off and break your bones that way. So we put down a sleeping bag and we showed you that. Um, here's some more ammo we could uh, keep if we need to refill that. So we're going to keep that. And uh, usually there is some type of military equipment in these uh, on this box. There's a specific kind of magazine. Uh, actually, we'll take this because it should say... Oh, this is civilian actually. You can find military grade ammunition at, at, at that place. Okay, here's another very important thing. Hand saws. Hand saws can be used when crafting. So let's say that, actually, can we, maybe we'll go do this right now so you guys can see this for yourself. Because hand, hand saws are very, very important. Also, there's a uh, generator in here. Generators are used to power lights, which I have a surprise for people who follow my series because I actually found a generator, but I haven't found any lights, and I'm going to set it up, and it's going to be freaking epic. All right, so what I was going to show you was, let's go ahead and drop this because I don't need that. I don't need that. Uh, I don't need this because I have, actually, I want to keep that because I'm going to demo it right now. So if you don't have a handsaw, doing crafting, wood crafting can be very, very laboring because what you have to essentially do, I'm going to show you when we cut this down, you'll see that you get two types of materials, logs and sticks. Now sticks are needed to make certain types of crafting material and if you didn't have a handsaw the only way to get sticks is to pick it up to find it. Cut down trees, pick it up. And so here you can see that I just put this log in the crafting menu and as a result I'm gonna get four wood per log. So you can hit craft and I can't carry it I don't think. So now we have a bunch of boards. So boards are very important uh, crafting material but like I said if you didn't have a handsaw you'd have to pick up your sticks which sticks are needed for a lot of things like supports so let me just show you where did that one go that I dropped okay whatever um, to make certain kinds of things and if you didn't have a handsaw you'd have to pick them up well if you have a handsaw you can actually put your board in and then take your tool and put it in the tool slot and you'll actually get sticks so that is very, very vital. Okay, handsaws are very important. Trust me. If not, if you don't have a handsaw, it can take you a very, very long time to do anything in terms of like building materials. So let's see what else should we cover because we've covered a lot of different things in this episode of a guide video. I think probably the next thing we should talk about before we uh, go is just to show you what the vehicle and refueling system kind of looks like and this thing is bugged out it's stuck in the stop sign oh I got a free actually so this is a military vehicle that you can find in a military location I won't tell you where so you can be surprised where you when you find it but uh, it's very wide it's rather slow it does have a horn has lights left click is your horn right click is your lights you can use it nighttime but uh, basically what I want to do is just show you I'm glad I got this thing free because it was stuck there forever. I want to show you the refueling process. So as you can see, the speed down there, it says exit F, seats F1 through 6 will allow you to actually change seats uh, by tapping on specific F, F keys. Now this thing is really kind of slow and it's not necessarily all that great for just going around on your own. Uh, it's better for like kind of a support vehicle transportation vehicle but below the seat switching thing you also see the speed down there and then you also see the fuel indicator showing you how much fuel I have left I have 23 percent fuel left well this is my car up here and we're back at the farm so I'm gonna ditch this and I'm gonna take my car because my car is like insanely fast and I'll show you this and I'll probably wind up dying at the end of this video so my hunger and stuff doesn't matter because I want to go back to my base and just respawn and just get all my stuff back. So you can see how fast the, the, this car is. You can also see that I have 6% fuel left. So I'm going to fill this up and I'll show you how to do that. Plus 3 experience for that farmer. So it's just interesting 
What? Which ones give you more? So that was only plus one. Which ones give you more? Plus three for that guy. Oh, this is something I actually haven't found yet, and I'm insanely excited to find this right now. Blowtorch used to repair vehicles. Use blowtorch to repair vehicles. You can also find car jacks and things like that. Oh, I don't actually have a fuel container. <laughs> Whoops. Well, there's no point in showing you something that I can't show you because I don't have some fuel. Uh, a fuel canister, gas can, to show you with. Some bow. I doubt there's going to be anything here. Chainsaw. Okay, so here's another important thing. Chainsaws. Chainsaws can be used um, uh, to cut down trees and kill zombies. And you probably have to walk backwards when you're... Um, killing zombies because you can't take damage if they get close to you now currently chainsaws don't require any gas but you can see how much okay so let's just demo this out okay so let's try to cut down this tree as fast as we can with an axe takes a very long time 10 hits I think with a chainsaw done very very quick so Chainsaws are very vital. Now, okay, so here's the process basically for refueling because I stupidly dropped that canister and I was going to show you how to do it. So when you get a gas can, it might be empty or fuel, you, full. You take that, and if it's full, you just go up to this. You uh, left-click with it out, and you'll fuel, fill up your car. You'll hear it actually filling up, and then you bring it back out. You go to the gas can, left-click, it'll fill up. Bring it back out, left-click, fill up the car, yada, yada, yada. That's all you have to do. So that's how you fill up a car so the biggest thing probably when first starting out is to find food drink some kind of weapon if you can right away uh set up camp somewhere uh preferably probably close to uh, uh some kind of main town and then you can actually just log out and log back in and respawn the loot if you want to play it like that if not you know scavenge for it like you should and um uh, then once you have set up camp, build a farm if you can, and then get some kind of wheels, get some wheels and uh, and a backpack. Backpacks are also very important because this little knapsack is just not going to cut it. You have Alice packs which uh, carry the most weight, 20 kilos kilograms, and then um, you have rucksacks which actually have more pack space but it's less weight. Uh, I prefer the rucksacks so that I can have more uh, space. But, I mean, it's up to you. There's also coyote backpacks and stuff, too, which you can find at uh, various military locations. And so with the sun going down, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this video very, very helpful. I, I feel like it's very helpful. I mean, there's a lot of things that I wish I was told when I first started out. And uh, so, guy video, hopefully it helps. I am looking forward to uh, bringing you some more guy material about crafting and things like that in the future, how to make a farm and things of that nature. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it helped. If it did, make sure to click that thumbs up button below. Share it with your friends. Share it around. Make sure people see it. And uh, so that way people start out in the game. They can, you know, figure things out relatively easy because it can be pretty challenging, especially if you don't know where to find resources for the game. So also, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe for more content from Unturned as well as other games such as DayZ. And uh, thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. We'll see you next time.